What makes a drone a drone? Howdy there folks, I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs and that is a question that I've been getting since I posted my DJI Phantom 3 initial impressions video. Well, there are two terms that are used interchangeably lately. One is quadcopter and the other is drone. Now there are a lot of people that will say, there are no drones on the market, they're all quadcopters, me, 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 and I'm not one of those people, but there is a difference between the two. A quadcopter is any device with four propellers or four rotors that propels itself up in the sky. Okay, that's a quadcopter. Now, now, a drone is a device that has the ability to perform certain actions autonomously, meaning all by itself, without user interaction. Now, some people will argue that none of the quadcopters currently on the market can be considered drones because none of them are intelligent enough to operate 100% automatically, and it's true that none of them can do that. But I would disagree and argue that there are actual drones on the market. It's very much like artificial intelligence. There's a difference between artificial intelligence that Siri has, knowing how to respond to different queries and different questions and different sentence structures, and what you get in the, the, the movie uh, Ex Machina, where there is a human, there's a robot that has the same self-cognizance and awareness of a human being. So that is what we have considered AI. I mean, it's a very large spectrum. There are very, uh, there are certain different levels of artificial intelligence, and I, I believe the same applies to drones and self-driving cars and all of this future that we're going to be seeing in the next couple of years. Now the quadcopters on the market are pretty interesting because they already have some autonomous features like the DJI Phantom series and of course the Inspire allow themselves to fly home to where they took off automatically if they lose radio contact with the controller or if they are low on battery. Now there are certain other features that are being developed, uh, one of which I'd like to show you. It's an application called AirNest that will be available on the App Store in the next couple of weeks for $20, $19.99. Now the reason that this app is so dang cool is it is completely uh, self-aware in the sense that it is able to perform actions 100% automatically once you've specified them. And that's where things are a little different. But let me tell you about this application. You open it up and there is a Google Maps satellite image of an area. You select the area that you want the drone to fly in. And then with your finger, you draw a path that you want the drone to follow. You can then select a focus point. So that is where the camera actually spends most of its time and attention. So I'm going to select the green on this example. And then you have certain parameters that you can change such as altitude and speed. Now, once you select go, the drone will not only take off automatically, but it will fly on that path, focus the camera on that uh, specified area, it will adjust the gimbal horizontally, uh, horizontally and, and, excuse me, vertically, and then horizontally the aircraft will turn, the yaw will adjust, in the case of the Inspire 1, which is a much higher end drone, the uh, gimbal is 360 degrees, so that will do it automatically. But the fact of the matter is, is that this aircraft can fly all the way by itself and film exactly what I tell it to do. Let me show you an example clip. So as you can see, that was pretty dang impressive. I did not touch a single thing. It launched, it filmed what I told it to, and it landed all by itself. Now you can see that it was not perfect. There were some parts where it was a little bit jittery. The software was slightly shaky here and there. I imagine certain factors to be the case, one of which is that I filmed it in extreme wind conditions. And then the second one is that it is beta software. It is version 
well, it's not even version 1.0, so things will improve in the future, but that gives you an idea of how devices are going to become autonomous. Now, a lot of people will look at that and say, okay, well, it's still not a drone because you told it to go on that path. You told it to take that speed and altitude. There was no collision avoidance, and that's true. And current drones on the market don't really offer this, but I believe in the next two to three years, we will certainly see this. Look at the self-driving car. Google has a platform, a device that's granted it's not flying in the air, but that probably makes it even more difficult that it's on the ground, it has to be aware of speed limits and obstacles and construction zones and traffic lights, all the sort of, uh, you know, crazy kind of stuff. Yet these self-driving cars have driven millions and millions of miles without any crashes as a result of failure to software. It's just amazing that this kind of artificial intelligence, it's very, very, uh, I don't want to say prepubescent, but <laughs> it's very, very young artificial intelligence. I'm sure we'll look back in 30, 40 years and say, remember when we thought that was amazing. But that's how crazy stuff is. The idea of artificial intelligence is a reality. It's not some abstract, what if some device could control itself in the future? They literally are doing that right now. The Google self-driving car hopefully will become a thing in the next couple of years. There's lobbyists and insurance companies and lots of other things that are going to kind of be obstacles to get it to market. But you already look at the drone market where some of this stuff is already happening. This application, AirNest, was developed by I think a couple of guys was all. And you can see how incredibly powerful it is. The question becomes, when does artificial intelligence become self-aware? And when that happens, are we all going to get taken over and destroyed by robots? In any case, don't tweet mean things about robots or artificial intelligence as a whole in case there is, uh, you know, a time when you do have to hide from the robots hunting our very hearts. I think I'm just going to end it there. That got really weird really fast. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, comment. There will be more videos all of this week. This was just kind of a weird abstract idea that I had. And as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.